welcome to the race weekend video for Outlaw Half Holcomb 2021. That's exciting. Um, I'm kicking things off today. It's Saturday morning, going out for a little bike ride, spin the legs out, a few, uh, few little pickups, and that'll do me. And then we are heading over to Holcomb. Probably going to leave here around midday after lunch, get wrapped up this afternoon, get down to the campsite, tent up, and uh, chill. So that's the plan for the rest of today. First things first, head out on the bike. Ooh. It was all going so well. It's been raining in the past like 20 minutes. So I'm gonna have to clean the bike now when I get home. Uh, and I gotta hope my shoes dry out for tomorrow too. Less than ideal, but one of those things. Right, let's get home, get packed, and get on the road. Right, we have made it to the race venue. Got here, set the tent up, then went over and racked my bike up because you gotta do that today. And uh, the plan for the rest of the evening is pretty much eat dinner. Catherine's gonna go out for a little run session now. Yeah, I missed it this morning, so I'm gonna do it now. I might go and see if there's any way to fly the drone because I've got that with me as well. Um, but yeah, have some dinner and get an early night and hopefully, well, the football's on tonight, so see how much sleep we get. I don't know if people are going to be watching on TVs or listening to the radio near us, but um, yeah. Oh, the other thing, sat in the car doing this because we're absolute camping novices and we forgot camping chairs. So the only chairs we have are the car seats, which is less than ideal, but just one of those things. There's a lot of those this weekend. I think this, yeah, late this evening, I'll go through the nutrition for the race as well, because it's changed a little bit from previous years and I kind of want to make a record of it on this video so I can look back and go like, oh yeah, that's what I had. Because if you try and remember after a race, it just, it's all a blur basically. So yeah, let's go see if we can fly the drone, sort nutrition out and have some dinner. Catch you in a bit. Nutrition plan as promised. So, porridge in the morning, banana England in it. Scored, I'm guessing. Yeah, the football match is going on as well. So, if you hear any loud cheering, we probably scored. Um, I'm having one of these this evening, one of those in the morning in a bottle, and then another one in this front bottle. This takes about 800 ml of liquid. So, that's hydration. So, in this front bottle, I literally just have water and hydration electrolytes. Then, on the bike, I will have, I counted this up, these are 22 grams each, so 22, 44, 66, 88, 110, 132, 154 grams, oh my God. so that's seven of these SIS gels on the bike, and then I've got another three for the run, take one every lap, and then I've brought one for before the swim, and a spare one in case Catherine gets snacky in the race. So how many in total? So that's going to be... 7, ten. 8, 9, 10, 11. And how much does that these. cost you? Oh, far too much. So these are 22 grams of carb each. So quick maths on that, 11 times 22, 262? No, 242 grams of carb throughout the whole race. Um, they're 87 calories each, so 90 times 11 is 810 calories, isn't it? No. 990 calories. <laughs> I My brain stopped working, so I'm just... So it's basically a thousand calories with breakfast, with hydration, and that should get me through tomorrow. We're all done for today. We're gonna go to bed now. Alarm is set for 4am, so we'll see you there.
Okay, so that is Will out onto the bike. I think he had a decent swim. I don't know quite what the time was. He was in a group with Harry Palmer and two other guys. I can't remember who it was, but he had uh, Andy Horsfall Turner was out of the water, maybe like 90 seconds, two minutes in front. So he's got a little bit of chasing to do on the bike but I don't know how much I'm going to be able to see if they're going to do any updates or not, but I will try and keep you updated if they do on the race tannoy. You've got James Teagle is in first position and he's storming ahead so there's no way I think anyone's going to come round him. Um, not sure who's in third and uh, second and third and fourth because it just gets too confusing with all these laps but Will is not looking great unfortunately. He looks like he wants to <laughs> stop so I think he's going to finish but um, he did not look happy so we'll see how he is at the finish line. Sam, distance champion, Mr. Will Munger, welcome into the finish line, Andrew. So here comes Will Cowan, well, Will was second here two years ago. No. Hello, hello. Now back home, it's actually Tuesday, so two days after the race. Yesterday I couldn't quite bring myself to get off the sofa, pretty tired. The legs have actually got worse doms today than yesterday, but I'm not feeling too bad or considered. I thought it'd be good now to go through the race weekend from kind of my perspective, thoughts when I've had a chance to reflect on it. And uh, yeah, so let's get started. The weekend, the camping was great. I slept about as well as could be expected the night before the race. I never sleep particularly well, but it wasn't too bad and we didn't have any noisy people next to us in the campsite, which is great. So the actual race itself, I think I was off four seconds after Andy. I kind of watched him go off into the distance and behind me I had Harry starting eight seconds behind and uh, someone else another four seconds behind me. That person behind me came round, I sat on their feet for pretty much the whole swim. Harry was sat on my feet and another guy, Ed Castro, joined us in that group. So the four of us got out up 25.46 I think was my swim time. Got out together, got onto the bike. I had a bit of a sloppy T1, so I need to practice that a little bit more. Um, caught up on the bike once I got going, caught up with Harry at the front of that group after about two and a half K. And then the first 50K on the bike, I really pushed the pressure on because the plan was to see if I could catch up with the PTO field. At that point, I kind of signaled to Harry, like, do you want to come round at 50k? And literally that same moment, my legs just fell off. I started feeling terrible. I think the first half of the bike up until then, I'd averaged 314 watts, normalised as 325. So it's going pretty well to plan. When Harry came round the second half of the bike, I think I normalised 283, average 272 which uh, is quite a drop off from the first half and it felt much harder. I mean, towards the end of the bike, when Dan got that clip of me out cycling, I was struggling just to kind of keep Harry within visible distance. And by the time I got into T2, he'd already racked up, was running out. So I was already on the back foot there and then got out onto the run and it was a bit of a death march. If your legs go in a half Ironman, they don't really ever come back properly. There's not quite enough time. It's not like an Ironman, so kind of got round the run. I know Catherine said I might have not looked like I was enjoying myself, but I, you know, I was happy just to be out doing a race, to be honest. I think normally I wear sunglasses because she's not quite used to seeing my face look as bad as it does when I start hurting towards the end of the run. Even though the result wasn't kind of exactly what I wanted, there was still some positives to take away. So I'll start with those first before going on to the negatives. So the swim, I was pleasantly surprised with. I haven't really done much more than a couple months of swim training back now, if that. 
And to come out with that pack of guys at the same sort of time as the group I'd wanna be in if I was in the PTO wave was really positive. I also was really happy with that nutrition strategy I put together and executed. I didn't have any sort of feelings of bonking or cramp on the bike or the run, so that to me suggests that that worked pretty well. And the other thing I'm really happy about is the fact that I didn't stop racing at any point. I felt like rubbish, but I kept going all the way to the finish line and I think not dropping out just gives you that other like tick that mentally you're strong enough to get through it even when it's pretty tough. So then some of the negatives of the race, I had a pretty sloppy T1 all things considered. Um, my leg actually cramped up a little bit, trying to get my foot in my shoe and I think it was also cramping out coming out of the swim symptomatic I reckon of the swim I might have gone a little bit too hard like burnt a few matches quite early on then the second half of the bike was obviously when that fatigue kicked in so that suggests that that sort of pace that I was planning on hitting was perhaps a little stretch with my current fitness how how I can currently race that was then obviously followed by quite a slow run off the bike compared to where my fitness in sessions has been so once again Something to work on there, I think, to make sure that race result actually reflects how training is going. So a few tweaks required, I think. So what's up next? Those few tweaks to my training are gonna be the, the priority. Not much, I don't think I need to drastically change anything, but leading into my next race, I'm gonna make sure that those changes are being made, which I'll go into another video, I'll discuss a bit more about those, to make sure that how I race is how I should be racing, not kind of blow up for reasons that aren't really fitness related, perhaps just a bit of specificity. I'll be targeting the British Middle Distance Champs at Aberfeldy next, that's the 22nd of August, which is six weeks time. Coach Chris and I have got a plan going into that, so I'm quite excited. Not sure I'm so excited for the really long drive up. It's the middle of nowhere in Scotland. It's a flipping long way. I want to say some thank yous too. Cheers for Outlaw for putting on a wicked event. Great atmosphere, great field and uh yeah i'm looking forward to doing some more of those in the future hopefully they keep those good fields going dan and liz got some footage on the course as well which was really appreciated that was in the video big uh thanks to my coach chris as well who got me to that start line in a shape which was the best it could be given how disrupted my training has really been over the past six six months or so and finally catherine was a pretty massive help at that event as well. You saw her little snippets of what was going on in the race and all of that filming was her too. Massively helpful setting up the campsite, driving to the event and stuff. So it just makes the whole weekend so much less stressful. Thanks again to anyone that shouted out for me on the course. It's amazing to hear that and uh, Sorry, I, I can't really reciprocate at times, but it's, a, it's appreciated and it's really cool. I hope you all had a great race if you did race and uh, enjoyed it as much as I did. If you're watching this video and you're new here, hit that subscribe button. I've got plenty more videos coming up this race season and uh, drop the video a like. Leave any comments you've got if you raced yourself. I'd love to hear about it and uh, I'll see you in the next one.